Hello, welcome back to the channel. I'm Ryan. On this channel, I react to stuff from the UK. And well, you know what's part of the UK? Wales. I literally, I don't know anything about Wales. That's just the truth. I just don't. So I'm ready to change that today. Let's learn a little something, 10 amazing facts about Wales. I'm actually quite intrigued. Let's go. Intro. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Wales is a country like no other. By visiting this small landmass to the west of England, you would think sheep are one step closer. Look at the baby sheep! Closer to ruling the world. What's more, some 400 crazy Welch beachgoers set a short lived world record for the most skinny dippers at a single venue. Be sure to buckle up. <laughs> okay. I'm liking the, the Welsh people. A short-lived world record for the most skinny dippers at a single venue. Be sure to buckle up. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Number 10. More sheep than humans. Wales is a somewhat smaller what? West European country. Because of this, its human population is just over 3 million inhabitants. This is nothing unusual and rather expected. What is so interesting is that the food many of them eat actually outnumbers the Welsh population 3 to 1. A survey conducted in 2012 shows that 8.9 million sheep and lambs live in the countryside. This number has slowly been rising ever since and can be attributed to the 1840s population boom. In one decade, the number of sheep tripled from 4 million to approximately 13 million. Sheep serve as an important part of Wales' economy. Why are those ones blue? ...million to approximately 13 million. Must be something sheep to do with how I mark serve them. as an important part of Wales' economy. The Black Welsh Mountain is a breed of black sheep with adequately soft fleece used in combination with other wolves. Ooh. Number nine, Welsh. That just got me wondering, like, how many cows in USA? 94. Okay, so there's three times more men more people than cows in the USA. But in Wales, there's three times more sheep. With adequately soft people. fleece used in combination with other wolves. Number nine, Welsh cuisine. Traditional Welsh cuisine hails from the working man, such as the farmer, fisherman, coal miner, and laborer. Fresh garden vegetables, with leeks being the most famous, are a known staple of Welsh and Irish cuisine. Because of the country's- I've never had that with leeks? With leeks being the most- I don't know what a leek is. Famous, are a known staple of Welsh and Irish cuisine. Because of the country's close proximity to St. George's Channel, among others- This place reminds me of like Alaska, like very uh, nature-esque. I, I, I guess the people there are very outdoorsy, if I had to say. Looks like it. Fish have also made their way onto Beautiful. the dinner table. Oh my God. Some of the Look most popular catches include bass, mullet, flounder, and tope. During the winter, your best bet in Welsh waters is catching a whiting or cod. Lamb is the best source of protein enjoyed by the great mm -hmm. majority. In earlier days, lamb was reserved for holy days and other holidays. During those times, pig was the most common everyday meal. Wales's cuisine has been heavily influenced by that of its neighbor, England. A well-known food associated with Wales is shepherd's pie. This extraordinarily simple meal is prepared by cooking meat, often lamb, in a crust of mashed potatoes. A more traditional way to top off any shepherd's pie in Wales That's gotta be good. is to add a layer of cheese and leeks to its crust. Number 8. Mm. The Cairnarvon wow. Castle The Cairnarvon Castle is an enormous medieval fortress located in Gwynedd, Wales. That's so cool. I love, as an American, I just love stuff like this. By King Edward I in the late 13th century oh. during a period when he replaced outdated structures, such as the castle, which was originally constructed oh in the 11th century. I would love to go. Like, do they have like fairs in here? I don't know. I just want to go here and eat some food. But at the time of King Edward, it was far behind the times. This stronghold acted as the administrative center of North Wales. As a result, many defenses were built in the area on a grand scale. The Cairnarvon Castle is considered to be the most impressive and preserved castle in Europe. Thirteen separate towers and two gates remain in excellent shape for their age. Many Welsh it's families huge. visit the fortress, which is open to the public. In 1969, it was the scene of Prince Charles's investiture as Prince of Wales by Queen Elizabeth II. Hmm. Number seven. Are you kidding me? I better get paid. What the f what is that? The Church of Mary and the Holy of the White Hazel near the fierce whirlpool in the Church of... Um, wait, how are you going to be the church of two different things? Church of Silo by the rain. A double for this one. <clears throat> Anyone out there from Wales can help me with this one? All right, here we go. Plan by Porsche Queen Give Gorge Equin Droboth Canta Silio Go Go Gok. There's not even any vowels in this word. Whew. It's a large. I mean, there were Y's and stuff. There are. 
but it just looks absurd. I, I wouldn't even bother. Yeah. Whew. Is a large village located on the Menai Strait and next to the Britannia Bridge, as one source clearly puts oh, it. Oh man. A census conducted in 2001 shows that just around 3,040 people live in the community. Although it is called many different things for simplicity's sake, the long version, as dictated earlier, is comprised of 58 characters and 51 letters. It is officially recognized as the longest placed name in the United Kingdom and among <laughs> the longest in the world. I feel like they did that on purpose, just to break that record. Well, this absurdly oh lengthy label for the town was thought up by a local tailor in the 19th century as a way to commercialize the area and open it up to tourism. There you go. In English, it quite literally means St. Mary's Church in the hollow of the White Hazel near the rapid whirlpool of Clantacilio of the Red Cave. Number six, sports in Wales. Sporting events are one of the greatest ways to showcase Welsh national pride. Rugby is one of the most enjoyed of all sports in Wales, oh, okay. with football, or soccer as it is referred to in some areas, acting as a very close rival in terms of popularity. Cardiff's oh, that's interesting. I always think of football as being way more popular than rugby. As it is I know rugby is popular to in some areas, wow. acting as a very close rival in terms of popularity. I would honestly rather watch rugby. So as far as that rivalry, count me on the rugby side because I like the violence. Or soccer, as it is referred to in some areas, acting as a very close rival in terms of popularity. Cardiff's Millennial Stadium is the largest in Europe to feature a fully retractable roof. It can hold approximately 75,000 people and host a wide range of sports events. Wow. World Championship boxing matches have been held under its roof, hmm. along with cricket and motorcycle racing. Golf is another sport often played in Wales. Oh, man. <laughs> How epic would it be to go there and play golf? Look at the scenery. That's half the part about golf. Like, the scenery is half the game. Just enjoying being out there. And look at this. This is more unique to the country than a majority of Europe. The country is home to over 200 courses and has hosted the Ryder Cup at the Celtic Manor Resort. I feel like that's a ton for 3 million people. I feel like that's just a ton of courses. The country is home to over 200 courses and has hosted the Ryder Cup at the Celtic Manor Resort, among one of the world's largest sporting events. Number five, the seven wonders of Wales. Mm -hmm. The poem that follows, or nursery rhyme as some call it, was written anonymously by a believed English visitor sometime in the late 18th or early 19th century. In it, the seven wonders of Wales are listed. It goes as follows. Pistis Rayara and Wexham steeple, Snowdon's mountain without its people. Over to new trees, St. Winifred, okay, Wexham what steeple, were those trees? Snowdon's mountain without its people. Over to new trees. Over to new trees? Those are sick. They look like they're out of Harry Potter. Oh my God, those are so cool. St. Winifred Wells, Clanglothlin Bridge, and Gresford Bells. As Britannia.com summarizes quite nicely, many would argue with the author's choice of so-called wonders. They are all found in the same general location and can all be viewed huh. within one or two days' time. It should be noted that St. Winifred That's convenient. Well is also referenced to in the late 14th oh my God, look at these pictures. century poem, Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. It speaks of a knight from King Arthur's Round Table and his journey and struggles to remain chivalrous and loyal. Number four, famous people from Wales. Colonel Sir George Everest was born on July 4th, 1790 in Crickhowell, Wales. He was commissioned into the Royal Artillery and was appointed assistant to Colonel William Lambton in 1818. Lambton had started the Great Trigonometrical Survey of the Subcontinent of India in 1806. Upon the Colonel's death in 1823, Everest took up his predecessor's work. He is credited with several important geographical breakthroughs. It was because of the Great Trigonometrical Survey that the three Himalayan giants, Everest, K2, and Kanjinjinga's heights were measured. In 1865, oh, cool. Mount Everest was named by the Royal Geographical Society in his honor, despite objections coming from Sir George Everest himself. <laughs> Other famous people from Wales includes movie actor Christian Bale. I didn't know Christian Bale was from Wales. Singer Tom Jones, movie actress Catherine Zeta-Jones, there's only 3 million people there, huh? What? That's a lot of famous people. Like, very, very notable celebrities. This includes movie actor Christian Bale, singer Tom Jones, wow. movie actress Catherine Zeta-Jones, and movie actor Anthony Hopkins. Number three, origins of the modern-day mail-order system. British entrepreneur Price Price Jones was born in Flanthrukeon, Wales, on November 16, 1834. He began his career working as an apprentice to the local draper in Newton, Wales. In 1856, he took over the business and renamed it Royal Welsh Warehouse, where he sold local flannel products. 
With the establishment of a national post office and the extension of the railway network, Jones came up with a concept that would forever change the world. In 1861, he began distributing catalogs across the country and allowing customers abroad to order their items via the post. Thus, wow. modern-day mail order was born. Without Price Price Jones's invention, <laughs> infomercials and companies such as Amazon.com may have never existed. Number two, the arts alive and well in Wales. Wales is correctly dubbed the land of song. One source claims that this is a modern stereotype based on 19th century conceptions of nonconformist choral music and 20th century male voice choirs. What? The country has had a rich history of music, making singing such a major part of their identity as a nation. That's cool. I'm going to have to react to some, some videos of that. I bet the singing is immaculate. I love a big choir. Sporting events and the arts closely coincide in Wales. The tradition of choral singing, male in particular, has been highlighted at such events. Brass bands have flourished in Wales ever since the Victorian era. Cory Band is one of the most successful in the world. They formed in 1884 hmm. and are among the oldest to still play today, with different members, of course. As early as 1187, people have been documented to sing and harmonize as a way of communication, rather than the typical speech in Welsh territory. This is taken from the writings of medieval chronicler Geraldus Cambronzi. Number 1. Skinny Dipping World <laughs> Record On Sunday, June 19, 2011, around 400 people stripped down to their birthday suits and plunged into the frigid waters of Rosalie Beach. This was oh done God. in an attempt to break the world record of the largest skinny dip at an a... An attempt? Don't you have to just count the correct number of people? Like... Single venue. The swimmers reportedly came from across the UK and Europe to Rosalie Beach, which is situated on the lower <laughs> tip of awesome. the country. The previous record is believed to be held by approximately 250 brave individuals. Oh, they crushed it. I mean, he said it was an attempt. I was thinking that meant they didn't they didn't beat it, but they crushed it. Oh, this event in Wales was organized job, by guys. Alison Powell as a unique way to raise money for the Marie Curie Cancer Care Charity and the National Trust. Amazingly, the group waded waist deep in the freezing water for a minimum of 10 minutes, smashing the record held previously. <laughs> Sadly, the title wouldn't stick. In early March of 2015, a new record of 790 was set in Perth, Australia. Ah. Uh. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's really fun. I feel like that's a record that, I don't know. Like getting that many people together, I guess getting convincing them to get naked and go in the cold water. Well, you need warm water. I think that's the secret. Find a place with warm water and then you might you might be able to break that record, especially if you went to like a nude beach. Just be like, hey everybody, let's go in uh, all together. Anyway, <laughs> this was uh, really cool. I'm very happy to be learning some things about whales, finally, since I literally I'm so I'm beyond ignorant of of the country. So that's cool. And I didn't know it was mostly sheep. So hopefully people watch this. I mean, I don't I don't think sheep speak English. So I hope I'm making this for I'm making this for the humans. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Uh, I hope to see you here again tomorrow. I react to stuff from the UK every weekday. Yes, I do. OK. Well, regardless of subscribing or not, thank you for watching and have a great day.